Our next speaker is King County Council Member Larry Bassett. Larry has represented neighborhoods in Central and South Seattle and unincorporated areas of King County on the County Council since 1993. He spearheaded the renaming of King County to Martin Luther King Jr. King County a few years ago. He has been a longtime activist as a student, as a community leader, and now as an elected official and in particular in that role has advocated consistently for those who are unrepresented and, un and underprivileged. And he in particular has worked to reduce racial and class disparities in our local criminal justice system. Mr. Gossett. Thank you very much. I want to mention to you all, because he's been kind of humble so far, that our moderator, David Bloom, will be a candidate for Seattle City Council. Right. Yes. Right. During the few minutes that I have, because I do, I, I agree with our moderator that we need to speed this up a little bit so that we can get to you all's questions and your participation in this evening's event. Uh, but I do feel a need to reinforce what Tim and Aaron uh, have said, that we can't just look at this issue of whether or not Seattle needs a new jail in the narrow sense of whether or not people are creating uh, street crime. We, look, we need to look a little deeper at uh, what are the economic uh, and political uh, reasons uh, for so many people being so marginalized that the only hope that they think they have is uh, hustling or being disruptive or picking up a gun mm -hmm. and uh, being paranoid about the cat that lives right around the corner for them and getting involved in street crime and going to jail. The jury is out, in my opinion, on whether or not uh, we will need a new jail. All of it has to do with us recognizing the deeper issues facing uh, our society. Class and race matter significantly, particularly in light of our criminal uh, justice center. In 1968, just 40 years ago, uh, uh, around this time, Aaron Dixon and I were in the King County Jail for organizing a sit-in at Franklin High School. At that time in 1968, because I, I did a little research on this, the um, average difference between CEO total compensation and the amount of money that the average worker in the United States made uh, was only about uh, 40 times as much. In other words, uh, the average uh, salary for a worker in a uh, manufacturing field in America was $10,000 in, in uh, 1968, and the average CEO only made 400000 was his compensation uh, in terms of his stock and, and salary. Today, and this didn't come from uh, the radical uh, nation or, or the Socialist Workers' Party newspaper that was being shared with us up front, this came, what I'm about to share with you, came from CNN. <laughs> and they were profiling the, the, the big corporate CEOs today. And of the top 150 CEOs that run American corporations, when their uh, total compensation of uh, money made off of stocks, uh, uh, wages, and bonuses, the average CEO in each of these countries made 1,000 times more than the average worker in their country. So AIG, to be even more specific for you all, uh, the average worker makes, secretary makes nearly $40,000. The CEO of AIG in 2007 took home $40 million. $40 million dollars, a thousand times that work, and we're at a point where nobody, at least the powers that be, don't see anything uh, wrong with that. If we allow, to use Aaron's term, that kind of irrationality in, 
and insanity to go on, uh, we will. There will be a clamor amongst people just like us saying, put these, this is crazy what's happening out here on these streets, these people trying to survive. Put them in jail. Aaron mentioned about the statistics relative to race and incarceration. In 1968, again, using that as a reference point, uh, there was only 113,000 black men in jail countrywide. It was about one in 300 black males. Today, there are 1.3 million out of the 2.5 million are African Americans, not minorities. It's one in nine. One in nine African American males ages 18 to 35 are in jail uh, on probation or the police are looking for them right now. We cannot do much about that or enough about that if this horrific racial and economic inequality continues locally, nationally, and internationally. So Aaron is absolutely right. We have to work for social change and a restructuring of the political economic order in our society. At the same time that on a practical level we see, we do what we can uh, to deal with the issue of uh, jails and inordinate high rates of incarceration. Uh, in closing, here in King County, we have been able to do some things to ratchet down uh, the jail uh, population. In the year 2000, we had a report done that said that by the year 2008, there were 3,600, 600 men and women in the King County uh, Jail, Bob uh, Marco. Uh, but today, there's 2,700. Uh, and the reason that we were able to keep the, the rate of incarceration down somewhat is because we began to focus on what drives jail population, and that's drug and alcohol addiction, poverty, uh, having alternatives for the mentally ill, and we set up mental health and uh, drug and, uh, and drug, drug addiction and alcohol treatment centers, programs, and courts. We, in, in the year 1999, 11% of the folks that went to jail from Seattle, uh, Peter, were going to jail for driving while license suspended. Driving because they didn't have a license left, but they still had to get where they got, had to get. And 48% uh, of that number that were going to jail were African American. We simply set up, uh, through the innovation of uh, Lisa Dugard and other lawyers at TDA, uh, a program where we would help people. We worked out with the state where we would get their license back on condition that they paid $25 or $30 a month, but they would no longer have to wait till their total bill is paid in order to get their license. We start giving them their license back. They, they drove legally, paid what they could each month, and we ratcheted it down the jail population. We set up day reporting uh, centers um, at the 400 Yesla building where we have about 200 people reporting there every day instead of in jail and there we're doing assessments, getting them in treatment, finding them uh, jobs and doing things to keep them out of the King County Jail and we were able to ratchet down. But next year if we don't do something, the money to support these programs is going to be gone because of the nature of our economy. And then there will be just as big a clamor for jails or the police to do something about these folks out in the street because they don't have the deeper understanding that most of us in this room is to build more jails. So i just like to concur with Tim and Aaron and probably what the other speakers would say in that it's mostly up to us pointing out these contradictions and organizing our people to do what's necessary, like this petition uh, that you're going to hear about in a few minutes. That is a good organizing tool where we say these are the practical things that people in Seattle should be doing before we consider building a new jail. Thank you very much. I look forward to